Okay, so today is day 11 of our vacation. We made it into um, Ireland last night after a long ferry ride, so we're ready to go. Um, and it is gorgeous out here. It really is beautiful. Thankfully, no rain so far. We've been very blessed. No rain. So, uh, we're just driving to Dublin. What do you guys think? I thought it would be like all be like The drive from Wexford to Dublin took us about an hour and a half and we actually parked at the Sandyford Park and Ride which is right outside Dublin is the last stop on this electric train called Lewis, L-U-A-S, and it took about a half hour to ride the train into the stop that we wanted to go to. There's a stop in the middle of Dublin at Trinity so that made it super simple. And here is the entrance to Trinity College. It took us a little bit to find it because we had to ask somebody. Evidently, we have to go straight through those doors. College, we went through the double doors as we were told and now we are in Narnia. I mean, we made it to Trinity College. Now it's time for our tour and we'll get to see the Book of Kells, which I'll be honest, I did not know existed until I was looking up this amazing looking library, the old library they have here. So we're going to learn more about that and then we're going to see the Book of Kells and then we'll know what that is and just look behind me, all the beautiful architecture around here. Reminds me a lot of Oxford, although Oxford is a little more innate, perhaps older, I don't know, we'll find out. Yes. Um, I'm actually a student here, I'm studying geoscience, um, which means I like rocks, so I hope you like rocks because I will talk a lot about rocks. Um, yeah. The college is 430 years old this year. And it goes all the way back to 1592. There's no brick, cobblestone, or building that goes that far back. And the oldest building on the campus is actually the one that's covered up at the minute. And the college is very old. We have a lot of superstitions. The main superstition goes around this. So it's said that any student who walks underneath it when the bell tolls will fail their exams. That's why we stand out here and we don't stand near. And my exam results are out next week. So even if it was flashing rain, we'd still be fine. <laughs> Our tour guide took us into a few buildings to look around and he was super knowledgeable and lots of fun to listen to. I definitely recommend getting a tour if you come to see the Book of Kells in the library because it's totally worth it to just walk around campus and to learn more about it. And the tickets for a tour were not much different than the tickets just to go and see the Book of Kells and the library. So it's definitely worth it from that point of view as well. Oh, hands up who knows what the Book of Kells is. Exactly. Yeah. Huh. You're all here to see a library. That's it. Um, no, the Book of Kells the book. is the Gospel. It's the four Gospels of the New Testament. So it's a Bible. Uh, it's very ornate, it's very detailed. Um, it's basically priceless, but it's basically an ancient manuscript. Uh, we are all here to see a library, so we'll go see the library. They had a large museum area talking about the Book of Kells and they gave the kids these really cool booklets that helped them to have kind of a scavenger hunt um, through both areas and they could fill out all the answers that they found along the way. They learned more and at the end they got a certificate which made them feel accomplished as well. 
the actual Book of Kells was kept in a room off of this area. It was a dark room and uh, no photography whatsoever was allowed of the Book of Kells, but in the library itself, they had a replica that you could take pictures of, so we did. Here is the long library. It is absolutely gorgeous. And when you walk in, you have the smell of old books. It was amazing. I would have very happily sat and read there all afternoon. It was just so awe-inspiring. And the smell, I wish I could bottle up and keep. We weren't allowed to walk amongst the books, but there were benches to sit on in the middle. And here is the very old harp that is said to have inspired the symbol for Ireland and subsequently Guinness later on. And here's the gift shop that you come to at the end of the library. They had a lot of things available, Trinity College and Ireland. Just down the street from Trinity College was a giant Disney store that we passed on our way to the bus. So we stopped in, there were three different levels, lots and lots of merchandise. We haven't seen a Disney store in over a year because we have not seen any while we've been over here in Europe and it was fun to go look through everything and there were a lot of clearance items. So we might have picked up a few clearance items as well. Just down the street, we saw one of those amphibious vehicles and we were going to see if we could take a tour on it, but they were already booked well into the next week. So definitely get your tickets early if you wanna see that. Instead, we got the Do Dublin Hop On Hop Off bus. We were able to get that for children being free, 35 euros per adult, and the Little Museum of Dublin was free. So we went right away through the Little Museum of Dublin. There were some other rooms with many artifacts and information and the kids really enjoyed getting to look at all of the walls of memorabilia. So we just finished the little museum tour. What do you guys think? We came back and went, I It was like cool. It. What did you like? It was fun. Um, I say it was fun. My favorite part was, I don't know what my favorite part was, maybe the first room that we were in. Did you like the tour or going by yourself? Um, well, kind of both. Was our tour guide fun? Yeah. What about you? What, did you like our tour guide? Yeah, she was really fun. The hop on hop off bus was very informative. It's the only one that we've ever ridden on that actually played the sound out loud. We didn't have to have earphones for it. We really learned a lot about Dublin and highly recommend it. One of the stops we got off on was right by Carol's Irish Gifts, and they had a huge selection of gifts from postcards to shirts to mugs to everything in between that you might possibly need. And I got a really cool Ireland sweatshirt here, and we found some really good deals. Well, the day's drawing to a close, and we had a really good day here in Dublin. And we're looking for a place that has shepherd's pie because I wanted to read to eat shepherd's pie because it's an Irish dish, right? Well, we were gonna go to this one right behind us, O'Reilly's, and it looks really cool. O'Neill's. O'Neill's, that's right. And um, here they say that evidently shepherd's pie isn't an Irish dish. I don't care. I'm just hungry for shepherd's pie at this point. But we did find Molly Malone. So 
next helpful tip for Ireland, Dublin, I don't know if it's everywhere, but um, we were going to go to a pub, get some stew because we couldn't find um, shepherd's pie like we wanted, and turns out that the kitchen closes at eight in any of the pubs we've tried thus far. So I guess you can only drink oh, after eight. So anyway. And randomly, and randomly, we ended up at a taco place in Dublin, Ireland. But it's still open until nine. So uh, we're going to enjoy our build your own taco burrito fun. And hey, they don't have, or we haven't been able to find good tacos in Italy. So do what you can do, right? That's right. Tacos in Ireland. When I go back to America, I'm going to ask for sparkling water because I really like it. It's a big thing over here. And my mom said she used to work in a restaurant and said of my dad is like nobody wanted it. And I'm going to ask you. for all the time. We need to get our beans. The kids were excited when it was time to head back to Cooper. And here's a picture of our host's house in Wexford and we stayed in the cabin right next to them. It was a very good Airbnb and I highly recommend it. Well, tomorrow we're headed to Cork, Ireland. Slán! Um, but yeah, this whole block took 20 years to build. The reason why it took so long is again, human bones. So every couple of feet they dig, they find human bones. They finally managed to link it back to the old anatomy building that used to be here. And basically all the way through the 1800s up until the very early 1900s, medical students were not provided with a cadaver. The college made you get your own. <laughs> they didn't care where it came from, who it was, or who you got it off, just that you had it. Um, if you look into most medical schools histories, grave robbing is actually pretty big. Um, but yeah, if you guys go out to Glasnevin Cemetery, it's the biggest cemetery in the country. There's about a million people buried out there and there's guard towers every 50 meters or so. You used to have riflemen that sat up there every night waiting to shoot grave robbers and half of them would have been Trinity students. <laughs> Very dark history. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until 1912 that the college guaranteed you your own cadaver. So, pretty late.